still chilling here at Mitchell House College in Polokwane. Very, very, very hot and sometimes humid, sometimes thundering, sometimes just lovely with fruits and greenery. Province of Limpopo in South Africa, one of our nine provinces. And I've got a learner here from Mitchell House who's going to ask our learner question for today. Eta di Bradiri. Sure, sure. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Please introduce yourself to the people at home. Okay, my name is Lindela. I stay here in Bendo. I school here in Mitchell House, grade 12. And yeah, that's practically me. That's practically him. And what is your learner question for today? Please explain what a limit is. You heard the man. Please explain what a limit is. Simple, straightforward to you. Yes, please explain what a limit is. Now, guys, there are no limits to those who believe in themselves. Do you believe in yourself, Amanda? Most definitely. Uh, and you guys? There are no limits, and calculus is going to prove it to you. Isaac Newton is going to show you that there are no limits, okay, or to, to whatever you want to do. So let's have a look at this. What is a limit? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a little parabola graph. Fx is x squared plus 1. It's one of those guys that you did in grade 10, those happy chappies, you see. And, um, and yesterday was Mother's Day, and I hope you spoiled your mom, and she's very happy. Okay, now, have a look at this. I'm going to select an x value how about one okay are you feeling like you're the one <laughs> okay yeah, the one. we're gonna pick it now watch this i'm gonna go from the right to the right of one and to the left of one and i'm gonna approach one okay now watch this now if you go slightly to the right of one well what are the values of x bigger than one two three four to the left of one would be naught minus one etc now watch this if you do this but before we do it i want to get a little y value here how do we work out the y value corresponding to x is one well do you remember f1 do you remember fx notation guys mm -hmm. what do you do f1 you stick in the one into one squared plus one which gives you two you happy with that now have a look at this guys if you go to the graph it's going to appear like magic are you watching the screen wow there appears two okay and here it is that's the y value corresponding to x is one now we're going to do something a little bit sneaky here the y value is one at uh, the x value is one and the y value is two now watch this now in maths we're going to do the following now notice i'm approaching one from the right can you see that there so if i approach one from the right what is the graph or if i come from the left did you see that i'm approaching from the left and the right now what is the graph doing where is it approaching ah a y value of two so look at me as the x's approach one the, the y values in the graph are approaching two is that easy as the x's go to one the y values are going to two now all we're going to do is we're going to get some sophisticated mathematical notation. Check this out. What we say, now don't panic. The limit as x is approaching 1, as x is approaching 1, okay, the y values are going to 2. See, maths is difficult. 1, <laughs> 2. Isn't that hard? That's cool. And we call it the lim. Lim means limit. As the x is approaching 1, where's the graph going to? It's going to, if we look at the graph, x squared plus 1. If x approaches 1, then the graph approaches 2. You simply substitute in. Isn't that easy? That's called a limit. It's as the x's go somewhere, the y values are going somewhere. As x approaches 1, y's approaching 2. That is how it, it is. It's so simple. Okay, now have a look at this. Let's have a look at another example. If I said you determine the limit. Now, there's another little parabola. X is going to negative 4. So all you've got to do is you say, well, if X is going to negative 4, substitute it into the equation for the graph. And guess what? You'll get the Y value. If X goes to minus 4, negative 4, where the Y value is going. Isn't this beautiful? Mm -hmm. So let's have a look here. So all we do is we do like this. We say, okay, simply plug in negative 4 into the equation. Look how easy that is. Minus 4 all squared is 16 times 2 is 32 plus 4 is 36. The y value approached is 36 as the x's go to negative 4 on that graph. Isn't it easy? Okay, now watch this one. This is very cool. Ha <laughs> ha. Now watch this. Here's the sangoma in action. <laughs> if x approaches 2 on this limit, guys, what do you need? Have a look here. If x goes to 2, you've got naught at the bottom there. Look here. You've got naught at the bottom because 2 minus 2 is naught. Can you divide by naught? No. Okay, there's a zero. When you look inside the fraction, you can see there's a 
big problem Mariah Carey sang that you see there's a zero or was it hero? Zero. Yeah. zero. 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 I like it. <laughs> now look at this. Now if X, now we've got a problem here. But let me explain to you what you do. You, you know how to factorize that, guys. Come on in Mzanzi. So how do you factorize this? Let's see. Yes, someone in Polakwani said it. Oh. Someone said it. It's Tabu from Polakwani. I heard that. I can hear it. Now watch this. Factorize. Difference of two squares. And when you cancel, and now just keep the limit there. Do you notice that if you do a difference of two squares on top, you cancel the x minus two like you did in grade nine, and you get no fractions. Tab was good. Tab was good. Mm. I don't know what the school was, but I, but I heard that. I heard it across. It's there in the atmosphere. And now we stick in two into there. Now look what happens. Two plus two is four. The limit is four, but in the beginning, we had a problem if you put two into the denominator. So what is happening here? This is very interesting. We got a limit of four, a y value being approached to four, but yet we couldn't stick two in at the beginning. So what's happening? Let's have a look at the graph. Do you want to see this? The graph of this thing looks a bit tricky. Represents the graph of a straight line where x can't be two. Now have a look at this. If you have a look at this, okay, well, I factorize, I get my line. Are you happy? Do you all remember straight line y equals x plus two? Who remembers that? Come on, got a y-intercept, an x-intercept, so let's have a look. If you take x cannot be 2 because of the original thing, now watch this. I'm going to draw the line y equals x plus 2. Do you remember how to sketch a line, hey guys? A y-intercept is 2. If you, if you stuck, let's just quickly revise that. Um, okay, remember you have y is equal to x plus 2. If x equals 0, then your y is 2. That's the y-intercept. And if y equals 0, then what happens? 0 is x plus 2. So minus 2 is x. So x is negative 2 on the x-axis, you see. And then on the y-axis, it's 2. So all we do is this. Now watch how beautiful this is. We plot the minus 2 and 2. We draw the graph. But look at this. At x is 2, there's a hole in the curve. The y value is not defined there. You see, x can't be 2, so it means there's a hole there. Okay, now that's amazing. Isn't that cool? That means that as you approach, now watch this carefully. This is amazing. As you approach, if the x is approach 2, the y values are approaching 4, but when they get there, no one's home. Guys, it's like this. You meet this beautiful lady and you want to go and visit her at home, okay? And what do you do? What is your goal, your destination, your limit is I'm gonna visit Sibungeli at her house. Do you agree? It's your limit, your goal set. And so you go. Wow, you go to her house. That's your limit. When you get there, you knock on the door. No one's home. But what was your goal? Your limit is Sibungeli. The graph's limit was as you went on the highway, approaching two, and then you, your graph approaches four, but there's no one home. Now that limit is very, very important and it's very easy. You see how that works? Okay, so y is two, x can't be two. Now let's have a look at another one quickly before we do this. Now can you see, x can't be negative three. You can't just stick in negative three there. Do you see that guys? Because there's a division by zero. But what do we do? We're gonna do what Jay Z does, we're gonna rap. We're gonna do some algebraic fractions, yeah. Here we go, check this out. Factorize, wow, look at that, keep the symbol. You factorize that, you cancel the x plus threes. You left with the x minus three. And all you now need to do is plug in negative three and your limit is negative six. Now this is important, you approach negative six, but no one is home. So all you gotta do, factorize. That is a limit, that's how easy it is. We have one guy here who says, yeah, and he's about to ask our second learner question here at Mitchell House College in Polokwane in Limpopo. Kelezanati National Road Tour, we could be knocking on your school's gate next. Unless maybe your, your school gate has like spikes and then we'll get hurt so we won't knock. Let's find out who's got our learner question. Hi, how you do? Hi, I'm finding you. I'm good. I just said, how you do? How do, how do you do? I do do. I do good. <laughs> All right. He do do do. <laughs> Okay, what's your name? Where are you from, man? Uh, my name is Calvin van der Volt and I'm from Polokwane. I was born and bred in Bloemfontein and I stay in Bendel Outspan Drive. Oh, so you moved from Mangawong to Polokwane? Yeah. So from, from Orange Free State to a state with oranges? With oranges, yes. I love avocado. And avocado. And watermelon. And popo. Okay, all right. Where, uh, what's your learning question for today? Uh, my learning question for today is please explain the concept of average gradient in the real world. Please explain. 
the concept of average gradient in the real world? That is this question. Over to you in the studio. Average gradient in the real world. Okay, now this is the next important concept in calculus. And you know what's amazing? Prior to the show, Amanda asked me about average gradient and she got it. It was absolutely brilliant. So let's, 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 let's talk about this. Okay, <laughs> have a look here. Here's a parabola. Find the average gradient of this parabola x squared minus 4 between 2x values minus 1 and 3. No problem guys, we draw the curve and here it is. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about drawing this on Moby School. We go into the details of how to sketch it and we pick two values. Now if you look at it, minus 1 and 3. Now really simply put, average gradient is like average speed if you talk of the real world. Now think about this clearly. If you get in the car and go from you know, Johannesburg to Pretoria, what happens is you vary your speed. Do you agree, guys? But you can work out an average speed. Okay, now in mathematics, how do we work out this concept of average gradients or in the real world, average speed? Okay, now have a look there. You've got negative one and three. Now, all you do is at x equals minus one, you plug in negative one into the original equation, x squared minus four, which is negative one squared minus four is negative three and you can put it onto the graph. Then you've got at x is three, the y value is nine, is nine minus four, which is five. So there you've got your x and y. Now come on, Amanda said this, when you talk of m, the gradients, the mm -hmm. gradients of the line joining those two points is in fact the average gradient of the parabola. Here we go. So what we've got is we've got, there's a and b, have a look at your two points. And how, how nice is that? So you've got your x, you substitute in to get your y, and you do it for both x's, yeah. and then you get y values. Now all, as Amanda said, the gradients of AB, sometimes referred to as m, you know, y equals mx plus c, and we work it out. Remember you said y, look at that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Y, b yeah. minus y, a, look mm -hmm. at that. You remember that, so you subtract the y, subtract the x's, divide, and then we get five minus negative three, be careful, and three minus negative one. And look at that, that comes to, let's just go a little bit back there so you can see, uh, five minus negative, not five minus three, but five minus negative three. And that comes to eight over four, which is two. And that's the gradient of that line. Okay, the gradient of the line is the average gradient of the curve. Um, the only problem with that is that I remember one time when I was stopped by a policeman and he said to me, your speed, sir, was 140 kilometers per hour in a 60 zone. I said to him, that is not my, that's not my average speed. My <laughs> average speed was 65. He looked at me very confusing. He said, ha ha, don't tell me about calculus. He said to me, I know you're talking about the average speed. Ah, I want to know your speed at the point and that's going to be the future lessons so stay with us we've just done average speed average gradients gradients of line joining two points mm.